The New York Giants have been a staple of NFL football in New York since 1925. From their dominant years in the late 80s and 90s, which saw them win two Super Bowls in a four-year span as they won in 1987 and 1991, with the help of Hall of Fame coach Bill Parcells and Hall of Fame outside linebacker Lawrence Taylor, to their more recent success, led by head coach Tom Coughlin, quarterback Eli Manning, and the Giants' stout defense, which also saw this group of men win two Super Bowls in a four-year span, as they won in 2008 and 2012. But ever since then, the Giants have been in a bit of a null, as they've gone from being Super Bowl champs to one of the worst teams in the league. So today, we're going to take a look at just exactly what has happened to the Giants each season since that magical Super Bowl year to see just exactly where and how the Giants have gotten it wrong as a franchise. Off the cusp of their Super Bowl win, the Giants were looking to retool to possibly make another Super Bowl run in the 2012 season. They bolstered their defensive unit by signing outside linebacker Keith Rivers and corner Antoine Molding, but they did lose key pieces on offense that helped them win the Super Bowl, however as they lost running back Brandon Jacobs and wide receiver Mario Manningham. However, the Giants did get pieces to fill their shoes in the draft, as they took Virginia Tech running back David Wilson in the first round and LSU wide receiver Ruben Randall in the second. The Giants started the season off very hot, as halfway through the season, they were first in the NFC East on a 6-2 record, and then the G-Men completely self-imploded in the second half of the season, as they managed to only win three more games and finish with a 9-7 record, which wasn't good enough to make the playoffs. The Giants had the number 14 offense in the league, and Eli had a decent season, throwing for 3,948 yards, 26 touchdowns, and 15 interceptions. Ahmad Bradshaw was the team's leading rusher with 1,015 yards and 6 rushing touchdowns, and wide receiver Victor Cruz was the team's leading receiver with 1,092 receiving yards and 10 touchdowns. The defensive unit is what ultimately let the Giants down this season, as they had the second worst defense in the league. Safety Stevie Brown was tied for the second most interceptions in the league as he had eight. And even though they didn't make the playoffs, the Giants still had four pro bowlers in Eli Manning, Victor Cruz, defensive end Jason Pierre-Paul, and offensive guard Chris Nee, and rookie running back David Wilson snagged himself a spot on the AP All-Pro second team as a kick returner. So. The 2012 season concluded in disappointment as the defending champs did have a winning record, but it wasn't good enough to get them into the playoffs. The 2013 season was one of ups and downs for the Giants. In the offseason, they departed ways with running back Ahmad Bradshaw, defensive end OCU Minyara, defensive tackle Chris Canny, and middle linebacker Chase Blackburn. In free agency, the Giants front office didn't really make any spy signings as they mainly only signed veterans and depth players to fill roster spots. GM Jerry Reese did have a decent draft, however, as the Giants took Syracuse offensive guard Justin Pugh in the first round to help shore up a struggling offensive line. Then they took Ohio State D-tackle Jonathan Hankins in the second round to fill the void left by the departure of Chris Caney. When it came time to start playing football, the Giants had about as bad as a start that any team could ask for, as they came out the gates losing their first six games. On top of this, in week 5, second year running back David Wilson suffered what was ultimately a career ending neck injury on a freak kick return accident. However, after losing their first 6 games, the Giants turned the ship around and won 7 out of their final 10 games to finish the season with a 7-9 record, but it ultimately wasn't good enough to make the playoffs. The downfall for this Giants unit was their offense as they had the 5th worst offense in the league and they featured the fourth worst rushing attack in the league as well. Eli had his worst season of his career as he finished with 3,808 yards, 18 touchdowns, and a staggering 27 interceptions. The offensive line didn't help as well as they allowed Eli to get sacked 39 times. The team's leading rusher was Andre Brown, who had 492 yards and three rushing touchdowns, which isn't really that great. And the team's leading receiver was Victor Cruz, as he had 998 yards and 4 touchdowns. On defense, safety Antro Roll was the team's top performer, as he finished with a team-best 98 tackles, 6 interceptions, and he had 1 forced fumble. Roll was also the only Giant to make the Pro Bowl this season. The 2013 season finished in disappointment, as the Giants couldn't avenge their horrible start, but things do look promising heading into 2014, as the Giants were able to finish the season on a strong note. The Giants needed to improve their offense drastically heading into the 2014 season after their abysmal outing as a unit last season. 
To kick off the offseason, the Giants cut ties with wide receiver Hakeem Nix, defensive end Justin Tuck, and defensive tackle Linval Joseph. The Giants did make some notable signings in free agency as they brought back wide receiver Mario Manningham, brought in offensive guard Jeff Schwartz to try to help solve their issues at offensive line, and they also brought in cornerback Dominique Rogers cromartie When it came to the draft day, the Giants took another LSU wide receiver in Odell Beckham Jr. in the first round, and their other most notable pick was in the second round when they selected center Weston Richburg. The Giants got off to a decent start to the season, as after five games, they were sitting at a formidable 3-2 record. And then, they lost seven games in a row, before ultimately finishing the season with a 6-10 record, and once again, not making the playoffs. The Giants offense did play a lot better in 2014, as they finished with the number 10 offense with the 7th best passing attack. They were able to have a great passing attack due to the fact that Eli had his best season of his career so far with 4,410 yards, 30 touchdowns, and 14 interceptions. Most of that was due to the fact that rookie wide receiver Odell Beckham had a breakout rookie season after getting a bigger role in the offense after wide receiver Victor Cruz suffered a career-changing knee injury in week 6 that cost him the season. Beckham ended the year with 1,305 yards and 12 touchdowns and was the team's sole Pro Bowl selection. The downfall this year for the Giants was their defense, as they had the fourth worst defense in the league and allowed the third most rushing yards per game. Jason Pierre-Paul was the team's only real standout on defense as he finished 2014 with 12 and a half sacks and three forced fumbles. And well, yet again, the Giants season culminated in disappointment as the G-Men once again finished with a losing record, thus not making the playoffs. Going into the 2015 season, the Giants cut ties with safeties Andrew Roll and Stevie Brown and also let linebacker Matthias Kiwanuka walk in free agency. The Giants didn't make too much noise when it came to signing players as their only real notable signings were offensive tackle Marshall Newhouse and third down running back Shane Vereen. The Giants drafted yet another offensive player in the first round as they selected the offensive guard-offensive tackle out of Miami, Eric Flowers, to try and continue to shore up their offensive line. In the second, the Giants took the hard-hitting Alabama safety, Landon Collins. The Giants once again had another decent start to the season, as going into their bye week in Week 11, the team was sitting at 500 with a 5-5 five five record. But then they ended the season extremely poor as they lost 5 of their last 6 games, finishing with a 6-10 record for the second straight season. It was more of the same from the season prior, as the G-Men had a clicking offense but an awful defense as they had the number 8 offense, number 7 pass offense, and they scored the 6 most points per game. Eli improved upon his career season last year as he finished 2015 with 4,432 yards with 35 touchdowns and 14 interceptions. Eli wasn't the only player on offense who improved, as Odell finished the season with 1,450 yards and 13 touchdowns. Both Eli and Odell were named to the Pro Bowl, and Odell was even named to the second team AP All-Pro. On defense, the Giants earned the title of the league's worst defense, worst pass defense, and they allowed the third most points per game. Safety Landon Collins had a solid rookie campaign as he led the Giants defense in tackles with 112, one interception, and one forced fumble. Cornerback Dominique rogers Camardi was named to the Pro Bowl after finishing the season with 58 tackles, 13 pass defenses, and 3 interceptions. Ultimately, after 3 consecutive seasons with underwhelming results, the Giants front office and 2-time Super Bowl winning coach Tom Coughlin parted ways after the season. After the Giants and Coughlin went their separate ways, the Giants later announced that they would be promoting offensive coordinator Ben McAdoo as their new head coach. The Giants also let wide receiver Ruben Randall leave as he didn't really pan out into the playmaker the Giants thought they drafted him to be. They also let cornerback Prince Amukamara walk in free agency. GM Jerry Reese did splash the cash in free agency as the Giants looked to address the horrible defensive performance from a season ago. As they brought in defensive end Olivier Vernon, corner Janoris Jenkins, defensive tackle Damon Harrison, and linebacker Keenan Robinson. In the draft, the Giants continued to address the defense as they took Ohio State cornerback Eli Apple in the first round and then Boise State safety Darian Thompson in the third. With their second, they also addressed offense as they gave Eli another weapon, drafting Oklahoma wide receiver Sterling Shepard. The Giants had an okay start to the season as they were 2-3 and three through their first five games. And then the G-Men went on a six-game winning streak before going 3-2 and two to close out the season. 
finishing 11 and 5 and finally making the playoffs as a wildcard team. The Giants played the Packers at Lambeau and ultimately lost 38 to 13 and their season did end there but it was improvement and it's been the best finish the Giants have had so far. Even though they made the playoffs, the Giants offense struggled mightily as the offensive line allowed Eli to be under duress all season and then proceeded to not generate much push in the run game either. They finished with the 8th worst offense which had the 4th worst rush attack. Odell was yet again Eli's top target as he racked up 1,367 yards and 10 touchdowns as he was named a pro bowler for the third straight season and was also named to the second team AP All Pro for the second consecutive year. The offseason spending on defense is what helped the Giants defensive unit to turn a new leaf as they were the number 10 defense in the league and had the number 4 rush defense. Safety Landon Collins led the team with 125 tackles, 4 sacks, and 5 interceptions, and a defensive touchdown. With this, he was named a Pro Bowler and to the first team AP All Pro. Other standout performers on defense were Damon Harrison, who was crowned a Pro Bowler and was a first team All Pro, Janoris Jenkins, who was also a Pro Bowler and named to the second team All Pro, plus defensive end Olivier Vernon and Dominique Rogers Cromartie were both second team All Pro selections. So things are on the up and up for the Giants as they finally made the playoffs and they look like a solid team. Some notable offseason moves for the Giants was that they cut ties with wide receiver Victor Cruz, offensive tackle Marshall Newhouse, and defensive tackle Jonathan Hankins. They also signed offensive lineman DJ Fluker to hopefully fill and improve upon the void left by Marshall Newhouse. And they also brought in another weapon for Eli and the big bodied receiver Brandon Marshall. In the draft, the Giants used their first round pick to give Eli yet another offensive weapon as they selected Ole Miss tight end Evan Ingram. In the second round, they selected Alabama defensive tackle Dalvin Tomlinson to fill the hole left by Jonathan Hankins. And in the fifth, the Giants selected Clemson running back Wayne Gallman to try and fight for starter reps at running back. The Giants came into the season looking to build upon their playoff appearance and make another playoff push. Well, that plan came nowhere near fruition as the team started the season 0-5 and could really never get the ship turned the right way after, as they finished with their worst record so far with a measly 3-13. Cornerback Janoris Jenkins and Odell were both marred by ankle injuries as Jenkins' injury caused him to miss 7 games and Odell's ankle injury limited him to only playing in 5 games this season. On top of this, head coach Ben McAdoo and general manager Jay Reese were both fired in week 13 after a loss to the Raiders where the Giants started backup quarterback Geno Smith, which put the team at an amazing 2-10 record. The Giants had the 12th worst offense in the league, which featured the 7th worst rush outfit, and they scored the second fewest points per game. Eli started to show signs of his age as he had a down year in 2017 finishing with 3,468 yards, 19 touchdowns, and 13 interceptions. The offensive line didn't give him much help either, as he was pressured on most throws and was sacked 31 times. Orleans Darkwall was the team's leading rusher with 751 yards and 5 touchdowns, and Sterling Shepard was the team's leading receiver with Odell missing a majority of the season, as he had 731 yards and 3 touchdowns. Evan Ingram did have a solid rookie campaign though, as he had 722 yards and 6 touchdowns. On defense, the team didn't fare much better than the offense, as they were the second worst defense, second worst pass defense, sixth worst rush defense, and allowed the fifth most points per game. Landon Collins was the lone bright spot on the defense as he had 104 tackles, two interceptions, and one forced fumble, which was good enough to be the team's lone pro bowler. The 2018 offseason was one of many changes for the Giants organization, as they hired a new GM in Dave Gettleman along with a new head coach in Pat Shermer. They traded away defensive end Jason Pierre-Paul to Tampa Bay and parted ways with offensive linemen Justin Pugh, Weston Richburg, and DJ Fluker, and they also let corner Dominique rogers Camardi, running back Orleans Darkwall, and wide receiver Brandon Marshall leave as well. In free agency, the Giants signed longtime Patriots left tackle Nate Solder to hopefully fix the lackluster offensive line play that's plagued the team, and they also traded for Rams linebacker Alec Ogletree to shore up a failing linebacker spot. The Giants had a very good draft, as with the third overall pick, they selected Penn State running back Saquon Barkley. In the second, they selected UTEP offensive guard Will Hernandez and Georgia outside linebacker Lorenzo Carter and NC State defensive tackle BJ Hill were selected in the third. Pat Shermer's first season as head coach didn't go as planned, 
as the Giants ultimately ended with a 5-11 record, which saw them come out to a poor 1-7 start to the season. The Giants' major issue was the fact that they couldn't win their close games, as 8 of their 11 losses were decided by a touchdown or less. They had a middle-of-the-pack offense as they ranked 17th. Eli bounced back from his poor season prior as he threw for 4,299 yards, 21 touchdowns, and 11 interceptions. But the offensive line play managed to get even worse as they allowed Eli to get sacked a whopping 47 times. Saquon Barkley had an outstanding rookie campaign as he ended the season with 1,307 rushing yards and 11 rushing touchdowns. He also had 721 receiving yards and 4 receiving touchdowns. Barkley was named to the Pro Bowl and was also named the NFL's Offensive Rookie of the Year. Odell was the team's leading receiver yet again as he had 1,052 yards and 6 touchdowns. On defense, the team struggled mightily again for the second straight season, as they had the 9th worst defense in the league and the 10th worst pass defense. Landon Collins was once again a bright spot on the defense, however, as he tallied 96 tackles and forced a fumble and was once again named to the Pro Bowl. Defensive end Olivier Vernon was also named to the Pro Bowl after having 30 tackles, 7 sacks, and 7 tackles for loss. On special teams, the Giants also had two more Pro Bowlers in kicker Aldrich Rosas and special teams player safety. Michael Thomas. Similar to the 2018 offseason, the 2019 offseason was one of many changes for the Giants, as they got rid of some household giant stars as they let safety Landon Collins walk in free agency and sign with Washington. But the biggest headline of the offseason before the draft was the blockbuster trade involving the Giants and the Cleveland Browns which saw the Giants send superstar wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr. and defensive end Olivier Vernon to the Browns in return for offensive guard Kevin Zeitler, safety Jabril Peppers, and the Browns' first and third round picks. The Giants' front office then proceeded to overpay for aging wide receiver Golden Tate, so heading into the draft, many people were trying to figure out just exactly what the heck the Giants' plans for the future were. As with the sixth overall pick, the Giants selected their QB of the future in Duke product Daniel Jones. With the first rounder acquired in the Odell trade, the Giants then proceeded to select defensive tackle Dexter Lawrence from Clemson. The Giants also made another move on the first night of the draft when they traded back up into the first round with the Seattle Seahawks to select Georgia cornerback DeAndre Baker. Two other noteworthy picks from the draft were the fourth round selection of Notre Dame corner dash safety Julian Love and the fifth round selection of Auburn wide receiver Darius Slayton. Even though the Giants made major roster changes in the offseason, it didn't produce to a winning season on the field, as the team ultimately finished the season 4-12 and, and first round selection QB Daniel Jones looked okay. He took over the starting job from Eli in week 3 and finished the season with 3,027 yards, 24 touchdowns, and 12 interceptions. Once again, the offensive line struggled for the Giants as they allowed Jones now to be sacked 38 times. Saquon Barkley finished the season with 1,003 rushing yards and 8 total touchdowns in a season where he was marred by ankle injuries. And rookie wide receiver Darius Slayton stepped up and was the Giants' best wide receiver of the season as he had 740 yards and 8 touchdowns. There really wasn't any good units for the Giants team as they had the 10th worst offense and the 8th worst defense. And to make things worse, on defense, they allowed the third most points per game. After a disappointing performance for the season, the Giants front office fired head coach Pat Shermer after he had a combined record of 9-23 in his two years as the Giants head coach. Looking back through all these seasons, you realize that the Giants were really marred by three major issues, which led them to being a poor performing team in almost every single season. The first issue being their offensive line play. The Giants attempted to fix their offensive line issues multiple times, whether it was through the draft or by bringing in players through free agency. And no matter what they tried to do, they simply couldn't get the right group of offensive linemen on the field together to be a good and consistent outlet. The second issue was the lack of consistent good play from the team. As when you look back, there really wasn't any point during the span where the Giants were able to be good on both sides of the ball. It was always either a top defense and a subpar offense, a great offense and a horrible defense, and if that wasn't the case, they probably had poor performances on both sides of the ball. 
The last glaring issue with the Giants has been the poor coaching since the Giants and longtime head coach Tom Coughlin went their separate ways. As both Ben McAdoo and Pat Sherman proved that they weren't the right coaches for the job in their tenure in New York. Looking towards the future, the Giants are taking steps in the right direction to potentially become playoff contenders once again. As they have started the rebuilding process, and who knows, maybe sooner rather than later if it all works out, we can see the New York Giants in the playoffs or even the Super Bowl once again.